Morning guys and the tech prepper, hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to continue our series on no random contacts. Last week we covered MERS and I felt that that was a very good gentle introduction into radio. Today we're gonna to make a little bit of a leap. Uh, the next logical step would have been for me to cover another radio service called GMRS or the General Mobile Radio Service. Unfortunately, I don't have my license yet. I haven't paid for it. Uh, and my radio has not arrived yet. It's actually sitting with a friend. So we're gonna revisit uh, GMRS in a later video and we're gonna talk about how it can be used for uh, the first three concentric rings of communication that I described in the last video. We'll look at our community, our city, and potentially our county. So if you guys uh, don't want to get into amateur radio after you see this video, take a step back. There are lots of channels like Not a Rubicon that cover GMRS very well. I just need some time to uh, digest it and then share with you my experiences. So today we're gonna to take a look at amateur radio. We're gonna start with the uh, privileges that are granted to you if you do the entry level technician class licensing process. We'll talk about that at the very end. But more than anything, I wanna talk about another mission objective. So stick around. All right, so today's mission objective is going to be a little bit of a curveball for us uh, compared to the last one. And we wanna set out to establish a communication with a known quantity that's either in our city or in our county. But the kicker is they're not going to know that we want to establish communication. And I think this is gonna be very important and food for thought and may dispel some myths of radio for the purposes of emergency communication, especially if your intent is to talk to somebody else. Okay, so let's talk about the known quantity, the parameters, and the solution to our problem. So my known quantity that I wanna establish communication with will be my Elmer Mike, or my mentor in the hobby. He's part of my communications group. In terms of parameters, we do have some constraints for this technique to work. We both need to be licensed amateur radio operators. Here in the US, we need at least the entry-level technician class license. In terms of being able for me to communicate at that uh, city and county level, we're gonna have to use a repeater. And a repeater is just a radio tower that is capable of uh, relaying your transmission to another station. They're typically located on either buildings in cities or on, in my area, on top of mountaintops. And that gives you, uh, that height advantage will actually give you the ability to communicate further distances. So we're gonna see how this works out. Again, the intent here is not for the other party to know that I wanna make a contact with them. So let's go ahead and jump into this video and then I will walk you through everything that's going on there as well as an after action report. I only have the iPhone, but let's see if we can get my Elmer mic. WB4, ZKA, KT1, RUN. Not terribly optimistic here. Don't know if he's monitoring. Hey Mike, your signal has improved. Uh, didn't want to interrupt you. I was actually doing a uh, ad hoc test here to demonstrate a point and you did it beautifully. Uh, before I jump into that, uh, how's my copy? I want to make sure you can still hear me. All right, yeah, I appreciate that. Like I said, um, I'm out here in the Tonto National Forest, my little playground here, running on solar power, a 10 watt solar panel, and a little three amp hour, amp hour battery running on uh, the 818, so only about six watts uh, FM. And uh, I was planning on making a video about the importance of establishing known contacts. You happen to be one of my known contacts. And one of the challenges, knowing when they're gonna be on the air, so this, uh, I think, is the fourth time I've tried you. I tried you yesterday, the day before, and earlier this morning. So it took me four attempts over three days. So just wanted to demonstrate to people that uh, radio is not like a telephone. Unless you know when someone's going to be monitoring, you may not be able to uh, to get them. Back to you, Mike. I only heard the 
All right, folks, so hopefully you enjoyed that little clip. And if there is one thing and only one thing you get out of this video, I want you to understand that it took me 48 hours from the moment I started to make or attempt to make communication with my, with my Elmer to the point which I was able to make the communication. So in this particular scenario, both parties need to be actively monitoring the same repeater system. And Mike typically is very good at monitoring the repeater system. Turned out he was out of pocket, which I did not know, and he was working an event. Now, I tried on day one with my HT running five watts, going into my repeater right before our run. I threw out my call sign, or I threw out his call sign, then my call sign, didn't hear anybody, so that was the first failed attempt. I tried behind me in my shack, same thing, got on the repeater system, hit the PTT, threw out his call sign, WB4ZKA, then my call sign, KT1RUN, crickets. Finally, uh, I think it was either Saturday or Sunday, I went into the Tonto National Forest behind me just to relax and get some hiking in. I threw up my tarp shelter, uh, got my small man pack radio, just running six watts, and uh, just decided to throw out uh, his call sign, followed by mine again, and sure enough, he actually came back to me. I was actually pretty surprised, and that was the clip you are seeing. So let's talk a little bit about the nature of that contact. Now, I mentioned that we are using a repeater, and a repeater is a mechanism whereby you have a radio tower that acts as a uh, transmitter uh, to retransmit your signal to another party and then the other direction. Well, here in Arizona, we have uh, basically a repeater system that's on steroids. It's called a linked repeater system. And the reason why that's nice is if you take a look at a model where you just have one repeater. So I'm out here, my uh, other contact or uh, person I want to communicate is out here. We have to be within the radius of being able to communicate with that one repeater. Well, in our case, we have a linked repeater system. So you could have multiple repeaters that are typically on multiple mountaintops that will relay the uh, transmission not only between you and the other party, but between you, one repeater, another repeater, and so on. Very cool stuff. So let me show you a map here on my screen. I'm out here as TTP KT1RUN. I'm out in the Tonto National Forest. And the simplex range, the point-to-point -point range for radio communication to where my Elmer was, way the heck northeast out here, was 39.51 miles. Not possible with five watts and these little radios. So since we are both um, actively monitoring the same repeater system, he wasn't the first few days, obviously, uh, but since we're both on that repeater system, I'm actually able to program my radio to get into a repeater that's part of that network that's 5.07 miles over here on Daisy Mountain. Now the cool thing is when I go ahead and transmit, that is actually uh, one link in the chain. It'll retransmit out to a repeater farther south here in Phoenix, which was 17.23 miles down to our Shaw Butte repeater. And then that repeater would retransmit to the other links in the network. And at a distance of 44.49 miles, it hit the Mount Ord repeater way out here on um, the east side. And then he was within about uh, eight mile range. So that's actually how we were able to establish a fairly lengthy contact using the amateur radios. So we're gonna get into uh, how you can find the repeaters in your area shortly, but I just wanted to give you a visual indicator of uh, what the actual contact look like in terms of physical locations of all the parties and all the infrastructure. All right, so I think we learned a valuable lesson, or at least I did, that even though I have radio at my disposal, even though I'm licensed to do so, even though I have a network, the challenge can be making sure the other party is on the air. So uh, a couple days ago, I decided, you know what, let's do another uh, targeted contact, but this time let's solve the problem and we're going to a establish a comma window beforehand. So via email, uh, I have part of that same group. Uh, I asked a group of people if they wanted to get together and be on a certain repeater at a certain time of day to be able to make a communication. And uh, one other party agreed, uh, my buddy Paul, KQ7V. KQ7V, 
K21, are you in? Hey there, Paul. I thought I'd give a shout out early, uh, about four minutes before schedule, so good to make a contact with you. So in that particular scenario, let's take a look at uh, this map here. Uh, I'm out here again uh, at my home base, and he is located 24.96 miles. Now, I can typically make that contact with uh, the antenna I have uh, outside. Unfortunately, there is a mountain between us. So the other nice thing of using a repeater is that typically it'll solve that problem if there is an obstruction between the two parties. So in this scenario, we actually used a different repeater. It was just a standalone single repeater. And from my location, that was 18.19 uh, miles. And then from him, it was 16.75. But the point there is that we established a window in advance so that we both knew we were gonna be on the same repeater at a given time. So that really is the other takeaway, is to establish a plan if there is an emergency, what frequency or which repeater will you monitor if you do need to raise another party. So that is really the big takeaway here, is to have a plan beforehand of knowing how to use these radios and knowing who you're gonna to talk to and at which windows you are both going to monitor. So really, that's really the big takeaway here. Let's go ahead and jump into what you need to do to basically do everything uh, that we've discussed today. All right, so if you're a newbie, let's talk about how you can do the same kind of thing that we did in this video. And really in the US, if you want to be fully legal and train when times are good, you're gonna have to get your entry level technician class license. My recommendation, or this is what I did that I found useful, is I bought the uh, Gordon West uh, technician class book. Uh, it's fairly thin and I would give yourself anywhere from two weeks to a month and just spend maybe an hour a day uh, just going through this and understanding the material. The book tells you everything you need to know in terms of logistics, uh, what you need to know to pass the test, where to take the test, all of those cool things. The other thing that I find useful is also buying an entry level uh, handheld dual band radio. Gordon West talks about that as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know if you're going to like radio, I recommend, and they may get uh, a bunch of bad comments here, but uh, the Baofeng UV5R, it's a inexpensive, I'll call it cheap actually, Chinese radio, but they're 30 bucks on Amazon, and they will work. Uh, that contact I made between myself and Mike through the repeater system works perfectly fine on that $30 radio. So that's the first thing I'll say about that. Now, the next question is, how do you find repeaters in your area? There is an application or an app for iPhone and Android uh, called Repeater Book. And the cool thing about you or about this is that um, it has all of the repeaters in your geographic area. So it geodetects you. And in my case, for example, you'll see there right at the top at 4.5 miles, uh, the W7 ARA. Daisy Mountain Fire Station repeater is right there. In fact, that was the repeater that I was using. And it gives you all the information, like the frequency, uh, the offset, and the tone to be able to program your repeater. So really not a whole lot of uh, work to be done there. Now, for those of you that are going to say it, this technique of using a repeater is great when times are good, but bear in mind that is third-party infrastructure that's outside of your control. So if the power goes out and the repeater you're using or the repeater system you're using doesn't have emergency power, you're out of luck. Um, let's say they do have uh, backup power, whether it's diesel generator or battery or, and solar. Um, in the case of diesel, diesel runs out unless somebody's filling it up and there may be other priorities if it's a real emergency. So keep that in mind that the repeater system, while it's a tool, it may not always be there. So in the next video, we're going to uh, look at how to extend our range uh, still within the city and kind of county area uh, using simplex. And that's basically radio to radio, but we're going to increase the range and we're going to get into some more sophisticated antennas that you can use compared to these rubber duckies. All right, guys, I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. And what's the deal with all the GMRS comments, guys? You guys are an odd bunch. <laughs>